I hope that you've got a great understanding of the process of electrolysis. But what are electrolytic cells actually used for? One of the most important industrial applications is the refining of impure copper. In South Africa, the Padabora Mining Company produces over 60,000 tons of purified copper every year, and it supplies most of the copper needs to the country. After the process of smelting, the copper that's produced is 99.5% pure, but that's still considered impure. It's not pure enough to make copper wires where resistivity is absolutely crucial to the transfer of current. The impure copper is cast into anodes and that's then suspended in an acidified solution of copper sulfate. Thin sheets of purified copper, known as starter sheets, form the cathode. The cell draws an incredible 200 amperes and produces copper of 99.99% purity. This copper is then remelted and made into wire rods of different diameters for sale into industry. Remember that in electrolysis, there's a conversion from electrical energy to chemical energy. A battery or a power supply of some kind provides the electrical energy that will then drive a chemical reaction. In this case, we're going to see how electrical energy can be used to drive a chemical reaction to purify copper. All right, now let's have a look at how the electrolytic cell works. Our container will hold our electrolyte, and in this case that will be copper sulfate, which provides the Cu2 plus ions in solution and gives the solution its characteristic blue colour. We have our impure copper electrode and our pure copper electrode, which are then connected together um, with a power supply. The positive end of the battery is connected to the impure copper electrode, making that positive, and the pure copper electrode negative. Now let's focus in on the impure copper electrode. At that electrode, a copper atom will lose two electrons to form copper 2 plus ions. Now notice I've shown there minus two electrons, that's to indicate that it's losing two electrons, but it's not common to write um, reactions like that with a minus, and so we take it to the other side and it's more common to show the two electrons on the right hand side. But in any event, copper is losing two electrons. Now I remember the mnemonic oil, oil rig, oxidation is loss. If we put an A on the end, oxidation is loss. It's a way of remembering that that happens at the anode. So this is an oxidation reaction because copper atoms are losing two electrons and the impure copper then makes up the anode. Let's focus on one particular copper atom on that impure copper electrode. I've denoted that with a little black circle. That copper atom will lose two electrons, and those two electrons will be drawn up by the battery. And as it loses two electrons, the copper atoms, atom becomes a Cu2 plus ion, which then goes into solution. If we focus now on the pure copper electrode, it's negative. So it attracts that Cu2 plus ion across to itself and at that pure copper electrode the excess electrons so the copper 2 plus ion will gain two electrons to form a copper atom. So the two electrons will attach to the Cu2 plus ion and that forms a pure copper atom which will be deposited on the pure copper electrode. It's a gain of electrons and we know that reduction is gain the so reduction is taking place at the pure copper electrode and that makes it the cathode. Over time we'll get more and more copper atoms being deposited on that pure copper electrode and the electrode will build up in size with more and more pure copper. The impure copper, as the copper atoms come into solution, it will slowly wear away until all those pure copper atoms have gone into solution. As that's happening, there's a build-up of impurities from that impure copper electrode that drops to the bottom, and we call that the anode sludge. It's really just a collection of impurities that were in the impure copper electrode. Now for every single atom of copper that comes off the impure copper electrode and goes into solution, there's a copper 2 plus ion, another copper 2 plus ion comes out of solution, 
as a copper atom on the pure copper electrode. So overall, we should see a, uh, a constant concentration of Cu2 plus ions in solution. I hope that gives you a good understanding of how the electrolytic cell works and also a better appreciation of how industry uses electrolysis to purify copper.